Alright, this tutorial is going to cover the basics of setting up an automated host and client situation in our network build. So I've just got a blank project here. I'm just going to create two new scenes. One for the offline scene. And another one for the online or game scene. Okay, so we'll start with the offline scene over here, and I'm just actually going to create a folder for that, scenes. Cool, so in our offline scene we need a network manager, and we can just reset that transform and add the network manager component to this. Okay, it'll automatically add a transport. We want to be using the WebGL transport in this case. So we're going to add WebSocket. Not WebGL transport, WebSocket. Make sure that it's assigned in there. And you can just go down the list. So we do want the start on headless. So basically, if you build a headless server version of this uh, application, it will automatically start in server mode, server only. Okay, in our offline and online, we need to drag in our offline scenes and our game scenes. This we will be switching out for a lobby in the next tutorial. Okay, we also need a player prefab. So we're just going to create an empty over here, call it player. Reset the transform. And we need to add a network identity to this object in order for it to actually be a networkable object. Okay, I'm going to create another folder here called prefabs and just drag player in there and delete it out of the scene. I'm going to assign player into the player prefab. Now the register spawnable prefabs, you need to remember that if you have any prefabs that you want to be spawning during your game and you want to be spawning it over the network, so on every client, it needs to be added in this registered spawnable prefabs list here and it does need to have a network identity on it. Server tick rate 30, that is fine. And maximum connection, so this depends obviously on your game as well. Um, since we're going for a lobby architecture, so basically one instance that can have multiple games running at the same time, uh, we'll want to pump this up to quite a bit. Um, Mirror, which is the package we're using, the network networking package, um, can take apparently up to 500, and that was all with network transforms. So basically, networking the positions, rotations, and scales of every object, and that was all at once on one screen. So this can take quite a decent amount. Cool. We don't need any authenticators or any of this other stuff. Um, the other thing to just know is uh, the port that you'll be running on. Just to make sure that this is a port that is actually available uh, wherever you're deploying the server. So on AWS, um, you'll need to go to security groups and make sure that this port is in fact open and it's not being used by any other um, application. Right. Okay, so we also need now a script. So we're going to create a folder for scripts. And we're going to create a new C sharp script, and this is going to be our auto host client. So we're just making a basic script that will um, auto automatically connect to the server if there is one. Otherwise, um, it will just show us some other options uh, in order to connect locally or host a local server. Okay, so I'm going to go and just change the background out on here. Where's this thing? There. Okay, I'm going to create some basic UI.
set that to 1 and that one to 0. And this is just going to be the UI that shows up if we do not find a server. I'm just going to drop my resolution here. Okay, so basically if it doesn't connect to server, then we're just going to show this UI. The one is going to be to... Uh, okay, that's the right-hand one. That's going to be to join local server. And this one's going to be host, host local server. Okay, then we just want to show this when uh, everything's timed out. So let's just do that with a basic animator. Go into the animation tab, press create. I'm going to create a little folder here for animation. Turn on the record. And let's put it over there. And we're just going to put in a canvas group element. Put that to zero and then to one. So it's just going to fade in like so. Okay, now we want to delay this whole thing so that it only shows up later on. Let's add a key over there. And that should just be fine. Basically, it should just be enough time for the server to either connect automatically or to have timed out by this point, and then we can host or join a local server. Right, so the buttons, we need to first of all drop our script onto something. Uh, let's put it onto, we don't want to actually put it on the network manager, so let's create a new one over here for auto-connect. Drop that on there, just reset position again. And I like to just organize my hierarchy here by putting things I don't need in there. Yep, that'll do just fine. Okay, then on the host button, I'm gonna drag that in there and on the join button as well. Uh, the, actually the join button will and the host button can actually connect directly to the network manager and just go start host. Then join, we do need to write some extra logic just to change out the network address over here. By default, this should be the network address of your server. So we need to change that out in the script. Okay, so we need a 
public void and we're just going to do a join local let's just do a network manager and we need the using mirror namespace okay we're not getting autocomplete it's probably updating And in the start function, we're just going to do network manager Ugh. This is just going to be easier if we just make this a serialized field Oh come on, give me autocomplete going to set the network address to localhost and that is a string variable and then we're also going to tell network manager dot start client okay then we can just drop the network manager reference in there on join we're going to set the Set that to join local and on host we've already got the start host and then by default just make that zero and I'm also going to just deactivate the interactable part here and tell it to only become interactable at that point And also, all animation by default is on loop, so we just need to turn that off so it doesn't do that. Okay, and there we go, we can host now. Uh, we haven't added our scenes to the build settings as the error states there. I'm just going to go and delete those ones and add these ones. And make sure that the offline scene is the zero index there. Okay, and there we go into the game hosting a local. Okay, so now some basic workflow stuff. In order for us to actually test the server and client relationship, we want to be able to test if a, another client can connect to this project. The easiest way to do that is to go to, over to your project and copy the project in uh, to have a duplicate of the Unity project in the same folder. Then open a program called SyncToy. Set up your left folder and right folder. These just need to point to the assets folders. And then run. So it'll look for any changes and duplicate it in the copy. So now if I go and open my copy there.
I have my secondary Unity open over here. This one is on the offline scene, so this one we can change to the offline scene as well. Run this one. Okay, host the local server. And if we join local server, we get an error because our build scenes are different in this one. Because it's only the assets folders, it doesn't actually copy over the project settings as well. Okay, and that needs to be on number zero. There we go. Run that. Join local. Okay, so now we get a connection. It is connecting from client to host. Right, now we need to also implement um, auto connecting a client. Nothing's telling the client to automatically start looking for the default network address that's in there. So in our script again, we need to have um, a basic start function. And we already have our network manager, so we can actually just use our network manager to start the client immediately. But we only want to do that based on if application dot is batch mode. So basically batch mode means that this is a headless build and it'll only be a headless build if it is the actual server, right? And basically the server will start itself because of that this little start on headless check over here. So we can just have in maybe a little log over here um, and just say um, server starting. And maybe let's do one over here for client connected. Yeah. Okay, and then for our client, we just need to say network network manager dot start client. So the start client call will just take the network address that's already in there and just try and connect to it. Over here, when we want to join local specifically, we do need to reset that network address to localhost and then try start the client again. Okay, and remember that um, we do this in start and not awake because uh, with awake, awake will occur before any of the network stuff has already happened. So before any of the network setup. So when working with the network stuff, if you want it to happen after the network has been initialized, then you need to use start, not awake. Okay, so we'll see here, client connected. So we got the client connected over here, or rather let's say client build and server build. Yeah, that will be better. Okay, and then we just got to sync again. Let it compile over here. Okay, so we're gonna start. Okay, we don't have a server. This is a client build, so we're going to host a local server. And this one is going to attempt to connect directly, and there it does. Automatically connects. So no need to wait. Okay, and that ends this first tutorial. That is the automatic hosting and connection. And you can change up your UI and make it look sexy.